Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. I love urbexers. These folks are so bored, they need to go through and explore the places that everyone else has no doubt of. Or in the case of tonight's tale, not quite so. Our nightly no-no this evening? The Walmart in my town isn't abandoned by Codder23. I live in a small town. Now knowing what everybody knows about Walmart and their presence around the country, you'd expect them to plant a super Walmart between the three small towns in the area and drive all the local businesses out of, well, business. Once the local stores were gone and everybody worked at the super Walmart, they'd have won, correct? You'd think that. The three small towns banded together in a show of unprecedented solidarity, and the Super Walmart became a black hole of profit. The local contractors made money, sure, but the Walmart didn't. A week ago, I would have called this a victory for the local mom and pops. After last night, I ain't so sure. It started when the Walmart finally went out of business. When they announced that they were shutting down, my buddy Tom got this, at the time, awesome idea. Do you want to go explore the old Walmart? He knew the amount of PUBG I played and how much I would have loved to explore an old abandoned town. With a Super Walmart being almost as big as one, how could I say no? A week later, Tom grabbed the GoPro he never used and I grabbed the lockpicking set that I'd never used and we set out to explore an abandoned Walmart. We decided the best way to approach was to park at the bar a mile down the street and to walk to the Walmart. This decision it probably saved our lives. The first thing we noticed were the black SUVs driving away from the Walmart. You see the MIBs driving down the road, Tom asked. We laid down in the ditch as the small line of SUVs drove by. Man, something's weird, I said. Tom picked it up before I did. Hey, they don't have their headlights on. They didn't. I'm surprised that I hadn't noticed it before. If we were just a hundred feet from the road, we probably wouldn't have noticed either. They're making, like, no noise. It's true, they were so quiet, the cars must have been electric. The last of the SUVs drove off into the distance, and we waited five minutes before getting out of the ditch and heading toward the Walmart again. We could see the darkened building in the distance, and that's when the second weird thing happened. Tom's GoPro stopped working. The little light indicating it was on blacked out, and nothing we did would turn it back on. At the time, we didn't think much of it, but I'm not a complete idiot, and I know it had something to do with what we found there. What may still be there. But like I said, we didn't think much of it at the time, and continued on to the abandoned Walmart. Except, it wasn't abandoned. It was faint at first, but as we got closer, it was clear that there was still light inside the building. It wasn't every light or even close to that, but there were definitely lights on somewhere inside. Tom wanted to go inside, I didn't. Tom was an idiot and walked toward the back loading dock. I was an idiot and followed him. Turns out I didn't have to fail to pick any doors as uh, the loading docks weren't even locked and they opened at the first pull. The dock was empty and devoid of anything. No shelving, no cardboard compactor, hell, the floor was even swept. This is even creepier than if they left shit behind, Tom remarked. The light that we'd seen from the outside was creeping in from the main part of the store. Look, dude, obviously I tried to say, but Tom was already heading toward the double doors to the main room. The image of him poking his ducked head barely above the lip of the little plastic window did make me giggle a little bit, 
It reminded me of a little kid pulling himself up to a tall window. The look on his face, however, that wasn't amusing. It was gray and ashen, like he'd seen a ghost. You need to look at this so I know I'm not crazy, he said, looking out over the little windowsill. I don't exactly know why I decided to finally look. Probably the same reason that I didn't leave when the GoPro stopped working, or when we saw the light coming from inside, or when Tom opened the bay door. Tom moved over to the next window, and I looked through the one that he'd been using. Right in the middle of the store, where the clothes would be, stood a bank of hospital beds. Unfortunately, the double doors that we stood behind were to the electronics section, and the beds were close enough to see. Close enough to see the children. All of them laid in hospital beds, connected to each child, was an IV leading to a machine with two spinning discs next to each bed. The IVs were red. Stupidity couldn't hold me there any longer, and I grabbed Tom and said, We need to get out of here. He stood transfixed, looking at the small children in their big beds. So I said fuck it and grabbed him. He came willingly, probably out of shock, and we exited through the bay door again. As we started jumping the back wall of the loading area, I was blinded with white light. A voice of authority came from the direction of the flashlight. Stop! I looked at Tom, who had jumped over the wall. He was already running, and I decided to make the only good decision of the night when I ignored the voice of authority. I finished jumping the concrete wall, and we ran. We didn't stop running, and they didn't yell at us to. We ran into the night and didn't stop until we got back to that packed bar. We found Tom's car and we drove home. Um, actually, that's incorrect. The first place we went to was the police station. The only thing that happened when we tried to tell them about the black vans and the kids was a sobriety test. With the GoPro permanently fried, we had no evidence to back up anything that we'd said. I didn't know what to do. Tom doesn't know what to do. I've been thinking about keeping this last part out of what happened. Including it will either mean very little or it might get me disappeared. See, I didn't completely go blind when the flashlight hit my face. My vision faded just long enough to see the ICE signia on the front of the Voice of Authority's bulletproof vest. Yeah, looks like a failing investment can still turn a profit, right? If you're going to exploit folks, there's more than one way to uh, <laughs> skin a cat. So stay scary, my wildlings. Be aware that a truth can hurt more than just you. And make the most of your nights.